ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 227 of the Spear and Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I'm, ha- I'm having a great week, to be honest. This podcast is brought to you by you. Support the show on Patreon. You get access to the Discord server, early access to everything that I drop, and every single week you get uh, an extra Spearhead Sunday's podcast, the Sunday Supplement. Uh, so check that out. Uh, also, my comedy festival shows are on sale now. Saturday, the first one, the Saturday Saturday 27th is almost sold out. I think there's 20 or so seats left to that. So grab your tickets to that one. I uh, would love to sell it out this week. Uh, tickets have been going crazy, uh, which I'm very, very appreciative of. And uh, it's amazing. Now, that's great. Lewspears.com for your fucking gigs. Patreon if you want to support what I do and you can't catch a show because uh, the world is how it is. Um, I am, uh, dude, I have had such a good last four days because I fucking, my sleep apnea, I, you can probably tell last fucking episode, I was so like beyond tired. I was so fucked that I just, because I hadn't been sleeping for about a month. Um, it's been so bad. But I uh, recently got this thing. It's called a buzz pod, right? And it is so fucking annoying initially, but it has changed like my my entire life since I started using it every night. What it is, it's this thing, and it's it sounds annoying because it is, right? Every fucking night, because my because apparently I've got a recess jaw, which I'm going to yell about more after this. I strapped this thing to my chest like fucking Iron Man. It's a little pod thing. It's a vibrator. I've got a vibrator on my chest every night. Jazz loves it. It's completely ruined my experience of sex, but it's changed hers for the better. <laughs> it's this little fucking vibrator thing that has like a like a weight or a sensor in it, and it can tell when I'm on my back because that's when it's at its worst. That's when I can't breathe is when I'm on my back. And it can tell when I'm lying on my back. So I strap it to my chest. And at any point throughout the night, if I roll over onto my back, it starts going and wakes me up. And I go, what the fuck? And I lie on my side and go back to sleep. And me waking up frequently like that is actually better than me just staying on my back and struggling to breathe. Hang on. I got to fucking plug my thing in here. Oh, why do I do this every episode? I'll tell you why. Because I never check. Every fucking episode. My laptop battery is absolute. My laptop battery is absolutely fucking cooked because uh, I'm always uploading and and I'm starting to upload shit in 4K. Like this podcast is going up in 4K, so I just disabled my computer. My computer's ability to sleep. I got it a couple of years ago, and it has never and it's never had a rest. Me and my computer are very similar. We don't sleep. Even when we even when we are asleep, we're not sleeping, you know? It doesn't it's not allowed to sleep. I said no sleeping. You're uploading. You're working, cunt. It's very, 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 very fucking similar to me. I'm never sleeping. I'm always working. I'm always grinding. You know those entrepreneur cunts that are like, man, every every day I wake up at four in the morning and I start my day. I go for a run. I do this. I answer emails. I get some business calls done. I do this, I do that, I do that. None of these entrepreneur cunts tell us what they're doing at night, do they? It's always the morning. Why are you going to wake up at 4 a.m. to be an entrepreneur? You don't. You really don't. Because I'll tell you what all these fucking entrepreneur cunts are doing. All these cunts that go on Joe Rogan's podcast, I wake up at 4 a.m. Do you know what they're doing at 7 p.m.? They're fucking sleeping. They have the same amount of hours awake as the average person. They just wake up earlier. And they're pretending like they go to bed at midnight like you and me. They don't. They go to bed at 7 p.m. Loser. Okay. Millionaire dork alert. Oh, it's 7 p.m. I'm getting a bit sleepy. Okay, dork. What, you're going to get up at 4 a.m. to fucking sit on your couch and wait for the rest of the world to wake up? Because you finished filming your 60-second Instagram video talking about how much more productive you are than me? Meanwhile, at 7.30 comes around, you start yawning. Okay, dork. Dude, be awake when you want to be awake. Just sleep properly. That's that's what I've realized. As someone who's a successful person, I'm not up there, but I'm doing all right. 
as someone who's becoming more successful, I'll tell you what it is. It's not about when you wake up. It's do you sleep or not? As someone who's become successful and then has not been able to sleep, that shit affects you. You don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. You just have to get seven hours at least. That's what I've realized. All these cans going, I wake up at three. I wake up yesterday. I wake up last year and get started on today. All right, bro. It's 7.30 p.m. and you start getting into your gym jams. You're a dog and that's fine. Don't pretend you're more productive than the rest of us because you are you start at four. Cool. I, might, I start at fucking 10 a.m. But I work late. I perform. Are you better than me, bro? No. We have the same waking hours you can't. The only difference is if someone hits me up and they go, oh, I w- do you want to do something after I finish work? Guess what I can say? Yes. Oh, I, I don't have to text them back. Oh, sorry. 8.30 p.m. That's gym jam time. I'll be in my jammies. I'll be in my gym jams yawning with a nice tea, getting ready to wake up at 4 a.m. to go for a jog, film an Instagram video and insult everyone who works nine to five. Oh, you you start work at nine, so you get up at, at eight? Kill yourself, loser. Shut up, dork. What are you doing at 8.30 p.m.? Yawning. That's what you're doing. Yawning. You're sleepy. You know what I'm doing at 8.30 p.m.? I'm working. I'm grinding. I'm. Could you imagine if, if entrepreneurs were the opposite of what they are? I swear to God, they just pick the morning to be insufferable. I'm going to be the opposite of an entrepreneur. I'm going to start making videos at fucking 3 a.m. Going, I just finished work. Oh, you just you 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 went to bed at 7 p.m. Gary V. Guess what? I just finished. Guess you're not working. Well, you're while well, you're sleeping, I'm working. It's 3 a.m. I look like a I look like a vampire. I look like a corpse, but I'm grinding. You're waking up at 5 a.m. Cool, bro. I'm resting after a big night work of work. You're gonna be a loser forever because you wake up at 4 a.m. While I I a true king finish work at 3 a.m. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna finish work at 3 a.m. and then start work at 4 a.m. I don't know what the fuck happens in between those two times, but I'm an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter. Sleep is for the week. At least that's what I say on Instagram, you know? All those cunts going, oh, hustle, grind. Yeah, okay, hustle and grind, but don't fucking kill yourself over it. Yeah? Is that insane? If you work a normal job, either, this is what they need to say, either, if you work nine to five, either, this is what I used to do, you either get up in the morning really early and start work before work so you can escape your job, or you stay up really late. And you can do both sometimes if you're really busy. But if you do that every fucking day, you're going to burn yourself out and go, you know what? Maybe my dream sucks and I'll work in a call center for the rest of my fucking life. That's what I used to do. I think when I when I had a job, what I used to do, and this is before I had sleep apnea. Or maybe I did and I was I just didn't notice it and I just powered through it because I was fucking broke and desperate. I would go to sleep at midnight every night and I would wake up at 6.30 and start working. Go to the gym, do some writing, get ready for my job, arrive late, do a bad job, leave, continue working, do gigs, go to sleep, wake up. And then and that whole period of my life was like a fever dream. It worked, but it is not sustainable. Although I suppose I do, I, I kind of do that a little bit now. If I have a gig, I sleep in. But I don't know. I think that's also because of my sleep apnea. Guys, maybe entrepreneurs are right and, and sleep is for the week. And if you, if you, uh, hey, you listening to this on Sunday. Did you wake up in the PM? You're never going to make it. You just ruined everything. If you, I'm, I'm going completely back on what I just said. If you go to sleep, you, it's over for you. What did you do this morning? Wake up? Cool. You're never going to make it. You will never make it. If you wake up in the morning, give up on your dreams because you don't care about it enough. Me, I haven't slept literally for years. Apparently, that's what my fucking doctor says. I haven't slept for years. I've been I've, I've been unconscious. My eyes have been closed. I've been lying in a bed for six to ten hours a day. But I apparently... 
according to all the fucking tests they've done, I haven't slept for years. No wonder I've got, I go insane. No wonder when I lose, no wonder when something bad happens, I laugh. And when I lose my keys, I want to put my fist through the drywall. Big problems are funny to me. Small problems could make me flip a volcano over. That's how mad, it's, my priorities are completely out of whack because I haven't slept for years. So I don't know what I should care about. A big problem happens and my brain already goes, well, you're too tired to fix that, so you might as well laugh. A small problem happens, I go, well, well you're too stupid to even find your keys. I get angry because I haven't slept for a year. I've got this buzz pod though, and it's changing my life. You know, the reason why I've been uploading Spearhead Sundays at like midnight is because often I will wake up at like 4 p.m. on a fucking Sunday after sleeping from the night before all the way through because I've been waking up at normal person hours and then working really late because I perform all throughout the week that Saturday is just a fucking write off. And then I wake up at like between two and four on Sunday and then drag myself out of bed. And then I sit in this chair for about an hour before I record the podcast going, I don't want to do it. I'm too fucking tired. My brain doesn't work. I've been using this buzz pod thing, bro. It's fucking, it's 3 PM. Normally I would have just woken up on a Sunday because I'm about that entrepreneur life. I work, I work from fucking 2 PM to 2 30 PM. That's a 24 and a half hour work day. I go through the night. I don't sleep. Literally, I don't sleep. According to the doctor, I'm medically diagnosed with being unable to sleep. I've gone insane. And now, and you get to reap the benefits of this. Maybe that's why the podcast is so good. He says, starting the podcast, going, oh, I need to plug my charger in. Anyway, so I've been using this fucking buzz pot. I've used it for... I did a trial week and it changed It changed the week that I did it and the week after. And then we had to send it back because it's fucking expensive and I wasn't about to blow my money on it if I if it didn't work. So we did, we did the trials and for fuck's sake, bro, the trial. So this cunt runs his business. It's just a guy. It's not a big corporation thing. And he goes, oh, you can do a trial fucking week. We're like, cool, send it through. And he sends us something that is clearly being used a lot. It's this elastic strap and then the little plastic vibrator thing. Hey, bro, you can't fucking send me a strap that has been used by every other cunt on the planet. Because here's the thing about, about sleep apnea. I shouldn't have it. Mostly men that have it really badly, they have it because they're obese. And guess what? Obese cunts that suffocate in their, in their sleep, they smell like shit. So I get this fucking used buzz pod thinking that I would get a, a, a fucking new elastic strap. I understand. I'm not going to get a new fucking unit if it's a trial version, but I need the new strap. He, they send me this strap. It smells like shit. It smells like fucking like six dudes had an orgy and didn't shower for a week. It's the BO of like 30 overweight men. And I had to strap it to my chest. Jazz couldn't touch me. She, she slept on the other side of the bed as far away from me as possible. Because I smelled like 60 other dudes. Sweating cheeseburgers and suffocating into their fucking elastic straps. Soaking in it. I'd strap that to my chest for a fucking week. I had a fight with Jazz. I'm like, I'm not putting it on. It smells like shit. She said, please do it. There's no, I said, what? why isn't there another option? She said, there's no, there's no other option. You need to do it. This is the only guy on the planet that makes this thing. Please use it. I'm like, we'll just get someone else to do it. I'll, I'll wait for Amazon to invent a different version of it. She said, he's patented it. But then, oh, fuck, is he, he's got the patent. I'm like, all right, I'll wear it. I put it on, changed my life. As with everything, she's always right. Please try this. And I'll fight her for three months. Try it. First time I tried a guy, that was all right. <laughs> and that's why we die early. That's why women live longer than we do. Because women do their research about things and go, oh, if I try that, it might make my life better. 
and men go, ooh, uh, I've got a lump in my nuts. I'm going to ignore it for 18 months. See what happens. I could, I could, I could fucking beat cancer by ignoring it. That's really the attitude that a lot of men have is, yeah, I'm sure chemotherapy works, but have you ever tried ignoring testicle cancer? That's what a lot of men try to do. And for all of them, it doesn't work, but for all of them, they think it will, you know? So we're going we're gonna to try radiation therapy on your breast cancer. That's what women do. They feel their tits in the shower and they go, oh, I've got a lump. And they get diagnosed with cancer and then they go, I'm going to try radiation therapy. Men, we see the lump on our nuts. We never touch it. We ignore it. And then we get it checked out. Then we get diagnosed. And then we go, I'm going to give it the silent treatment. How about that? That's the type of treatment that I'm getting on board with, the silent treatment. And then we die early. And, and then the whole world goes, I wonder why. We know why. And we're not doing anything about it. And that's how men work because we're tough. Oh, I've got a disease. I'm going to take medicine for. Oh, well, why don't you just, why don't you my pussy on your forehead? Huh? Why don't you just walk into the doctor's office and go, oh, I'm a big pussy. I've got, I've got COVID. I want to get true. Put me on a ventilator. Shut up, weakling. I'm going to muscle through it because I'm a man. <gasps> Darth Vader. That's what I'm going to sound like. I'm going to be cool and tough. That's my advice to all these women out there. If you get diagnosed with a treatable disease, just ignore it. Muscle through it. Oh, med is the wonders of science. Let's try medicine. It's a preventable disease. Bro, we don't even use condoms. That's how fucking stupid men are, is that not only will we not treat diseases that we have or illnesses that we have. I remember when I was a child, my dad had an infection on his ass and he just left it there for months. Months. He just ignored it. He had an open wound on his ass. He's a builder. He hurt himself. Something went into the fucking meat of his ass. It got infected. And that man ignored it for months. Even I, a child, my dad's a nudist. He's always walking around naked. So I would always see his ass. And I would look into that festering wound every morning because it was about my eye height. And even me thought, I, th I even I, my little child brain thought, that cunt needs to see a fucking doctor. That's that's really what men are. It's just, it's, we reckon we're, we're not smarter than medicine, we're stronger. That's what we think. We're so fucking confident in our own ability to beat shit that we'll just ignore it, you know? That's why men don't wear condoms. We're like, I reckon if I fucking believe hard enough, my cum will start swimming the other way back into my balls. I'm not going to have a baby. I'll pull out. And then we, and then in the moment we go, a ah, couple more thrusts. Fuck! I have a child. And that's why we die sooner. Because we don't want to do anything about it. Yes. Yes, I'm going to die. I don't care. You want to do something about it? That's why women are so important. Because if there weren't women, there wouldn't be anyone. Because we'd all be fucking dead. Do you really think that if women didn't exist, the human race would have made it this far? Absolutely not. We would have gone extinct ages ago because it was funny. That's what women are for. They're for going, stop. Would you... Can you be careful? No, that's stupid. Slow down. Can you please? Have you thought about this? You should get that checked out. Can you do the... What are you wearing that for? No. Is that really going to work? Are you sure? I didn't think that's... Maybe you could try... I just think it's not such a good... idea. Yeah, but what if it doesn't work? Okay, but have you thought about this? Well, come on, just try that. Why don't you try it? 
can you just I'm just saying No, it's not that I don't believe in you. I just don't want you to die. Hey, where's your helmet? Say belt. Don't text me driving. Can you just well, I don't know why you just think and that's the only reason we've made it to 2021 is because women do that as they should. And it's not like they like doing it. It's just they know if they didn't, we won't and the race won't survive. You know, there's there has to be 50% of us going to the other half, hey, slow down. Hey, go to the doctor. Hey, are you sure that's going to work? Hey, that looks dangerous. You need that because if we didn't have it, we wouldn't be here. But also, you need men to, to have the urge to do dumb, dangerous shit because if we didn't, we also wouldn't be here. It's a balance. Men need to have in their fucking brain, I reckon I could get up there. Because that is progress, isn't it? I mean, a lot of us are going to die on the way, but you need that. I reckon I could jump that. Do you reckon I could, do you reckon I could fucking smash that? And you see that giant fucking mammoth? I reckon if we got six of the boys and a bunch of rocks and sticks... We could kill that cunt. Like, that is what it is. Because if, if if it was up to women, they would go, leave it alone. No, don't. It's dangerous. It's nice. It's minding its own business. I'm, I, it doesn't matter if I'm cold. We can, we can hug each other for body warmth. I don't need a new jacket. These, these stones are sharp enough. What do we need ivory for? No, stop it. Like if that, if that, if that was the only energy in our race, it'd be, we'd still be in the cave eating fucking leaves. You need teamwork. You need us to be fucking stupid and women to rein it in a little bit. And then we find the balance and we all win. Too much stupid, we go extinct. Not enough stupid, we stay in the caves. It's a balance. Why am I here? What am I talking about? How did I get to this? Oh, yeah. So this sleep apnea shit. I strapped it to my chest. I, I used the trial. Fixed my whole fucking week. The next week, we sent it back to get the results. Because here's the thing. With my sleep study... The results from the sleep study came back and my sleep apnea was pretty good. Like I didn't rate high enough on the fucking thing for them to see it as a problem. However, they did note that whenever I was on my back, my sleep apnea was severe, which is as bad as it gets, which is something that only like fat men in their 50s and 60s should be reading. So for me, like a healthy, weighted, fit, 27 year old guy to be in the severe category is severe it's in the fucking name but they were like ah you're not really you don't lie on your back enough for it to be a problem and then i said well then why the fuck can't i read for six minutes without falling unconscious why doesn't my brain work why can't i find my keys ever why is it that every single fucking time i start my podcast i forget to plug it in my brain's fucked because I don't sleep. But apparently, I they watched me do one night and they were like, yeah, you're fine. Okay, doctor. Anyway, we get the fucking, the buzz pod thing is on my chest for a week in my bed, in my environment, how I sleep. Because the sleep study's done at a fucking weird hospital in shithouse beds with different pillows. Like it's not a normal night's sleep, which is what we're trying to resolve, isn't it? Turns out I am on my back for 
like every hour I lie on my back for about 40 minutes, an hour, and every time I'm on my back, according to the sleep study, I would stop breathing every seven minutes. So, I mean, you do the math. If I'm on my back fucking more than once an hour, and every time I'm on my back, I stop breathing more than every 10 minutes, I'm suffocating. That's why I'm not sleeping, right? So, finally, that was interesting to know. I'm like, great, I do have a fucking issue. I get the buzz pod back now. I got my own one. It's new. It doesn't smell like shit yet. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it there for sure. Uh, and, uh, now I, now I can think and I'm awake. Kinda. It's only been a couple of days. After a week of it, I was really good. I, I wonder what I'll be after a month, but it's really drilled into my head that I definitely need this surgery for sure. Speaking of, I can't remember, I think I told this on Luke and Lewis, but uh, I'll tell the story of the, the nose surgeon as well. My nose is also fucked. I've got two deviated septums, which means I can't, I've always been a mouth breather, and then I listen to this fucking podcast of this nose and throat specialist, Joe Rogan, talking about how important it is to breathe through your, no- through your nose. So I started, tr- started to try and do it, and then I just was like, I realized, oh, I just can't. My nose isn't blocked. It doesn't, it, it, there is no opening for air to go through. There's nothing, there's no passageway. It's blocked. It's the fucking mines of Moria up there. It's caved in. So we go to this nose cunt and he goes, yeah, you've got two deviated septums. And he goes, I can do a deviated septum surgery, but that's probably not going to fix it because your nose is so fucked that it's, it's just not going to fix it. What you need is a rhinoplasty. And I was like, a nose job? And he goes, yeah. Because obviously he's a cosmetic surgeon too because he does the face. He needs to know how to, how to make it look good. So he knows how to do a lot of cosmetic rhinoplasties. And I was like, oh, fuck. And he starts telling me about my nose. And uh, he goes, so, so what we need to do is, is, is a deviated septum surgery. It's, it just does surgery on the inside of the passageway but if the passageway is bent and fucked, and both of them are in your case, the problem is up the top here. I mean, you can see it. My nose here at the top is really narrow, and apparently that's a problem, so that even if they did straighten the passageways, the passageway is just not big enough, so it's not going to make a difference. So he goes, what we need to do is we need to actually go into the nose and actually completely change the shape of it to make the, the, both of the passageways big enough. And I was like, oh, okay. And, he, and then he goes, I was, I was thinking this, oh, this is interesting. And I'm thinking, oh, is that going to change my, how my face looks? Because I don't, I like my face. I like how I look. Uh, I have no desire to change it um, other than my jaw. I could change that. I wouldn't be mad at that. But that's just going to be a natural thing. But in terms of like my facial features, I'm happy with it. I don't want to change it. My nose, I like my nose. But he goes, and you know, while we're in there, we'll fix up your nose too. And I'm like, well, and I go, I just go, oh, yeah, well, yeah, because it, like it, you know, to, to make me be able to breathe. He goes, oh, well, you know, we would fix this ridge too. We'd get rid of that. And he just, he just puts his pen on my nose and he just, he just like does the outline of my nose. He goes, and, you know, while we're in there, we can fix this up for you. Like just doesn't ask if I would like to fix my nose. Not that it needs fixing. He just goes, oh, while we're in there, we'll fix up this ridge too. And I go, what ridge? And he goes, oh, this ridge here. And he does it again with his fucking pen. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, oh, well, and I'm like just confused at this point. I'm thinking like, oh, is the ridge the reason why I can't breathe? And he he just goes, oh, well, because I'm a cosmetic surgeon as well. Most people, you know, they'd want to get that fixed. I'm like, is this cunt fucking telling me that I have an ugly nose? I, I want to be able to breathe, bro. I like my nose. I didn't say I also have an ugly nose. I go, I, hey, man, I can't breathe. Can you help me with that? And then he goes in and he goes, oh, you've got a fucked up, ugly hook nose. You look like a character caricature from a Nazi anti-Semitic cartoon, you fucking hook nose banker. What are you fucking... Oh, while we're in there, we'll fix up this too. I like my nose. There's nothing wrong with it. I left that fucking doctor's office trying to look at my at my side profile, being like, is my nose ugly? No one's ever told me that I've got an ugly nose. What's wrong with it? Most people would, would want to fix that up. What's wrong with my nose? 
man. Got me all self-conscious about my... I knew it was big, but I thought it suited my face. I like my nose. I don't want to fix it. That ridge. And now, now every now and then, I, every time I touch it, I'm like, gee, there is a ridge. <laughs> there is a ridge, isn't there? It goes like that. But I don't think it's bad. I've never in my life... And I've, I make videos, so you would think that if it was a bad nose, I'd fucking know about it. I've been... I've heard the chin thing a lot. I know I have a recessed jaw. I've never had a single comment about having an ugly nose. Fuck, man. I'm going to come out the end of this uh, the end of this year. I got my insurance so it, so the, the surgery will be able to to happen about fucking 10 months from now. Cuz there's no like it's like a fucking $20,000 surgery without insurance. Buy tickets loosebeers.com. Um, I'm going to, I might come out of this fucking thing with a whole new face. That's what I would be paranoid about is, is I, I, if, if I get this deviated or this rhinoplasty now, I thought it was deviated. Septum, I would tell him not to change my nose. I mean, it's going to look, it, it, it'll look bigger at the top or wider, but I don't, I, I would tell him not to do it, but I, I really worry of, Sometimes what happens when my mum, she's a hairdresser, she cuts my hair. Well, when she used to cut my hair, sorry. When I was a child, mum would always cut my hair. And even when I was, I, she cut my hair until I was like 22 because I lived at home and it was free, right? So I just get her, and she is a great hairdresser. But the problem is, I would tell her what I wanted and then she would give me what I what she wanted me to have. And I worry and that's fine because it's it's hair, you know? Like, oh, well, it'll grow back. If I get a bad haircut, no worries. It'll grow out. I could find someone else to do it. I could be a bit more specific with my directions. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I didn't communicate properly with, with letting the hairdresser know what type of haircut I should have. It's a little bit different when it's your fucking nose, you know? Like, that's what I worry about is that I go under with this plastic surgeon guy and I, the last thing that I say before I fucking pass out is... Don't fuck up my nose. I like my nose. And then I pass out. And then he goes, Ah, I reckon I know what'll look good on his face. Oh, he'll, he'll, when he wakes up, he's going to thank me. And then I wake up and, and my, and it's all, and my, uh, my nose is all swollen. And I go, Oh, thanks so much, doctor. I hope by the time it heals, I can breathe. He goes, Don't worry, mate. You're gonna love the nose, and I and I go. Sorry, I'm. I'm gonna love it because I'll be able to breathe, or I'm gonna love it because you've changed it. And he goes, mate. All I'm saying is, you're gonna love the nose. It's gonna feel like a new nose, a brand new nose. And I'm, I'm gonna say a brand new nose because it's functional. Unlike my previous nose be that was busted or a brand new nose because you've, you've fucking renovated it and added an attic. Because I just want my normal nose, but a nose that can work and you're making me nervous. And he goes, mate, I'm the best cosmetic sur I I didn't want cosmetic surgery. I wanted medical surgery. And he goes, no, but, of, of, you know, it's, it's a mix. It's both. Because obviously I, I, I need to know how to do cosmetic surgery to be able to operate on people's faces. Obviously, I, I have to know what opening this passageway is going to do to the external view of your face. And then I'm going to have to go, so you're telling me that you haven't changed how my nose looks on the outside. You've just changed how it functions on the inside, which is what I wanted. That's what I want. I want the fucking classic car restoration with a brand new interior new engine great fuel conservation new leather seats but on the outside it has to look like a mustang and then he'll go are you saying that your nose look like the coolest car ever i'm saying no but you know what i mean and then he's gonna go mate all i'm saying is you're going to love your new nose. And then I'm going to have to wait three months for the swelling to go down, for me to be able to breathe from it, take the bandages off, and then one day 
I'll look in the mirror and I'll go, this cunt gave me Lindsay Lohan's fucking nose. I don't want a cute little button nose. I like my beak. I like how I look. So now I'm worried about that. The jaw thing is like unavoidable. I'm going to look different. I don't, because the fucking problem is, you guys are going to understand, but if, if, if like 18 months from now, maybe you saw the Marxism video that went viral, maybe you saw the vaccine one, maybe you saw the fired sketch, and then you think, oh, I wonder what Lewis has been up to. I haven't seen him in my feed for a little while, because he must have taken a break. I know he had some kind of... Uh, some surgery coming up to help him breathe. I'll check his channel and, and you come back and I, and I look like fucking Kim Kardashian with a dick. So Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And you look at me with my brand new face and, and the casual fan just goes, what happened to Lewis Spears? That guy was insecure. He looks like a fucking Ken doll now. The man's plastic. That's that's what I am most worried about is I want to go in and I want to get these fucking surgeries so I can breathe and sleep. But I don't I don't the problem the you know what the problem is and I've already got a few comments like this deviated septum surgery to breathe is what every fucking celebrity says to explain away their very obvious cosmetic nose job for aesthetic purposes. They all lie. I'm I'm telling the truth. I can't fucking breathe, but if I come out with a brand new nose, everyone's going to just put me in that box of, oh, yeah, sure. You want a deviated septum? Yeah, sure, you couldn't breathe. All right. Okay, Caitlyn Jenner. All right, plastic face. Gonna look like that fucking cunt who wants to look like a Ken doll. You know them? They're always on a current affair. I've spent $80,000 on cosmetic surgery. Cool, bro. You look like a fucking washing machine. You know those, those sometimes washing machines? They look like they have a face, but they don't really. That's what these people end up looking like. Appliances. You look like a fucking Smeg fridge, bro. It's like, yeah, there's kind of like a, a suggestion of a face, but it's not really. You're an appliance. That's what I'm going to look like. I'm going to look like a fucking toaster with a dial on it that looks like it could be a smile. And I'm going to go, G'day, guys. I'm doing comedy for the average person. And the average person is going to look at me and go, you are a fridge. You are an appliance. You look like a fucking iron. You look like a mid to low end oven, not a comedian. But I feel like my jaw will make up for it. So once again, no matter how I feel about this, no matter how many, how, how many trepidations I may have, no matter no matter how many reservations or worries I have about this whole process that has been dominating my brain. The only thing that's been in my brain is comedy, selling tickets, and am I going to look like a fridge? It's the only things in my brain. But no matter how many reservations I have about this whole process, I just want you to know that when I get my new chin, it's over for you. And I'm going to have to get a fucking house. A giant mansion with 3,755 bedrooms because I will need to house and feed and clothe and look after every single one of your mums because I'll be fucking them. There's going to be a big roster. There's going to be a giant roster where I'm going to have to figure, I'm going to have to, they're going to have to take shifts. I'm going to have to fucking prioritize, make sure there's no fighting, no jealousy because all of your mums are going to be in my house taking turns on my dick. When I got my new chin, it's over. All the ladies listening to this, guess what? You'll be living with me. And it's not like I want that to happen. I just know it's an inevitable side effect of me with a brand new jaw. 
Can you imagine? I start sleeping better, means I can work out, means I can eat more. I'm going to put on weight. I'm going to be a six foot eight giga Chad. And it's over for you. And we know that that's true. And the only thing that could ever prevent that, re- that, that from happening, the only thing that could ever prevent this from becoming a reality is one day, one of you looking at me and going, that guy kind of looks like a fridge. <laughs> What's up with his nose? Where's the ridge? Didn't that guy used to have a ridge? Did he get rid of his ridge? Hey, Spears, did you get a nose job because you hated your ridge? Boo, insecure, beta. That's the only thing that could stop it from becoming a reality. Guys, I like my ridge. And you should too. Not your ridge, mine. Yeah, most people want to get rid of that. I fuck, I, it's not why I'm here. Plastic surgeon. Did anyone else here have their net worth considerably altered by Elon Musk tweeting about Dogecoin? <laughs> I put a little bit of money into Dogecoin. I put some of my own money in. I put some of Luke and Lewis's money in without telling Luke as a joke. I took it out of the fuck. I took a thousand dollars out of the joint account and put it into Dogecoin as a joke, thinking, "Oh, we'll lose half of it, and then it'll be a funny joke, and then I'll sell it, and then you know it'll be a, a good little joke on the show." We made a lot of money because the fucking as soon as I did that shit, Elon Musk started tweeting about Dogecoin, uh, and and I just want to say that. The economy is completely divorced from reality now. It's not real. Anyone studying a finance degree, I highly encourage that you fucking quit because anything they're teaching you is bullshit. Oh, if you look at this trend, if you look at that graph, if you look at consumer behavior, quit. It's not real. It's detached from reality. I made $2,000 out of fucking Dogecoin. A coin that was created to specifically be worthless as a joke. That's the entire purpose of it. I googled it. It's a parody of Bitcoin. It's supposed to be limitless. It's a joke. It is designed to be worthless. And I made and it made me two grand. Quit. If you're studying finance, quit. It's over. It's not real anymore. It's all imaginary. I know cunts that made fucking almost millions of dollars on GameStop. A company that that not even a year ago was worth four dollars a share, now it's worth five hundred, or it was worth five hundred, now it's not. I I would say that no matter how many people I know that made many hundreds of thousands of dollars out of GameStop, there's going to be millions more that lost way more out of that dump. I hope none of you fell victim to it. I said very clearly. At the end of my fucking video, I think this is going to end very unfairly and I'm not putting any money into it, but I am putting it into Dogecoin. Look what happened. GameStop went down, Dogecoin went up. I am a genius. Maybe I don't need health insurance. Maybe I should take all the money I'm putting into fucking health insurance and put it into Dogecoin, a, a currency that was created as a joke. It has no use. If you're studying finance, you must quit. It's not real. Could you imagine if you studied your life to become a cook and all of a sudden eggs started tasting like sugar? You'd be like, what the fuck have I studied? Why did I waste my life doing this? That's what happened in the market. Everything just flipped upside down. It's not real. I think that's what the world has to realize. It's not real. Biggest performance the stock market's ever had was during a pandemic when everything was fucking closed. It's fake. It doesn't exist. Cunts are buying currency that isn't real and becoming millionaires out of it. It's not real. I'm going to invest in this because they're making money. Cool, bro. Buy a coin that has a dog on it that says much currency. Wow. Then you'll be some fucking millionaire investor. It's not real. That's what I encourage everyone under 30. If you listen to this and you're under 30, you've got no kids, 
no mortgage, you have no responsibilities, no one counting on you. Just take all of your money and put it into the dumbest thing you've ever heard of. Oh, a, a coin that has a joke on it that says much currency, wow, and it's designed to be worthless. If you have $100,000, put it in. Best case scenario, you become a billionaire. Worst case scenario, you lose it and you deserve it because you're an idiot if you do that. Don't take anything I'm saying as advice. This is a comedy podcast. I'm obviously exaggerating. Please don't put money in a Dogecoin. You know how fucking guilty I felt when I logged into my Patreon server disc Discord and someone had created a, a fucking channel of discussion about investing and about 10 cunts put money in a Dogecoin? You know my stomach dropped and I thought, oh, fuck. They did what I did. I said I put money in a Doge, so all these fucking idiots did. And you know what? I, that was a big reason why I sold. Elon Musk started tweeting about it, went way up. I sold everything. And then I put in the Discord, I sold everything, hoping that these cunts would follow me. None of them did. And then the whole fucking week, I'm stressed and going, I'm going to cost these cunts all the money they put into this. I feel so bad. And then I check it today, it's up 80%. They've made more money than I have. It's all fake. It's not real. Don't listen to me. Put your money, Google dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard of and put all your money into it. What's the dumbest invention anyone's ever come up with? Put your money into that. Oh, invest in Amazon. They're a profitable business. It's taking a call, bro. Fucking invest in a guy that figured out how to make pants for fish. That's going to make you more money at this point. It's all imaginary. It doesn't make sense. It's not real. Or invest in my Patreon. <laughs> I cannot fucking believe that Elon Musk made me a few thousand dollars. That's fucking insane. You know what gets bad when in one day I made more money out of Dogecoin than I did out of comedy? That made me angry. That made me go, I need to work harder because that cannot be a more sustainable way of living, you know? Like, of course... I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I made the money. But at the same time, it, ma it makes me fucking angry that I made $2,000 because Elon Musk said Dogecoin and tweeted a picture of a rocket. And then my brother, who's a carpenter, fucking broke his back for seven hours building houses and made less. The world is broken. It's fucked. That, I would say that that is, is quite a... I've never been a communist guy. I've never been for that. But when I saw me make $2,000 out of something with a fucking Shiba Inu dog on it, created as a joke by Reddit years ago, and me make two grand out of it, while this other idiot, obviously, is building houses for people to live in, contributing something of worth to society, make, I don't know... 700 bucks? I, th I thought maybe Karl Marx had a fucking point. Burn it down. <sighs> and that's where I'm at. So I hope you guys are making money. For real... You should invest your money wisely. Don't put it in a fucking bank. Have savings. Have What you should do is you save up enough money to if you lost your job and had zero income, you could live off your savings for three months. That's what everyone should do no matter what age you are. Have three months of savings. Work out your expenses. Get that money in a savings account. Leave it there. Don't touch it. Then any extra money you have, fucking invest it in something. Put it in businesses you believe in. Put it in fucking ETFs. Educate yourself. There's so much shit on YouTube. You should fucking figure out what to do with your money because honestly, dude, this, these systems are not built for you. These fucking retirement funds are, are not really built to look after you. You know, you know how you see all these fucking old people that trusted in these super companies looking after them and, and trusted that they they would have some retirement fund by the time they retire. And then they retire and they got fucking nothing. And they just have to rot. 
and starve on the, the minimum amount of money the government hands them. You've got to secure your own future. And that doesn't mean becoming a millionaire. That doesn't mean becoming some fucking uh, multi-billionaire day trader. That just means put your money to work and figure out how you can make your money last. Um, and apparently that means putting it into a fucking Dogecoin. Do not. Don't put your money into it. It's gone up like 500%. And then it dropped down like 300%. And then it's been going up 80% and dropping 60 all day, every day. It's risky as fuck. Don't listen to me. Yes, I made money. It was a coincidence. And as soon as I did, I pulled it out. If you want to do crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, the top fucking 10 coins, you'll be sweet. Don't be a fucking moron and only invest what you can afford to lose. All right? I don't want to log into my fucking Patreon Discord and see everyone going, you cost me this. Fuck. Anyway, guys, should we do miscellaneous bit at the end after that? Uh, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end, it's the worst part of the podcast. It's why I, where I answer questions sent in by the listener. If you have any life advice that you, that you would like, if you want any life advice, if you have a funny story, uh, if you have a question, send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. I'm running low on the emails. I think I only have time to do one, but I am running low. So if you want to send something through podcast at loosebeers.com, um, you'll make the podcast and I'll keep you anonymous if you would like. Um, here we have, here's someone who sent me a story of a dream they had. Don't send me. It won't be read. Hey, Lewis, I know you love vandalism. Here we go. So I thought I would share a quick story I had regarding a near-death experience that came as a direct result of lack of forward thinking and common sense. Love it. Uh, don't use my real name because I've somehow managed to avoid criminal charges throughout my adventures. All right, so this guy's name is uh, Sam. Me and some mates were exploring an old abandoned building we found, which for obvious reasons I will not disclose the location of, legend, uh, and wanted to get inside the building itself, which was a bit tricky because all the windows and exterior openings were boarded up. I climbed up onto the roof, stupid, and found an exposed window, which had glass in it, but no boarding. I then did the most logical thing in my mind to do. I sidekicked it. Oh, you fucking idiot. I clearly didn't think it through because on contact, the plate glass window shattered and a large slice... Oh, no! found its way into my ankle, cutting through the skin and slicing open the artery. Oh, no. Dude, you didn't... Oh, that's disgusting. That's fucked. People die like that. Uh, long story short, I, I lost a lot of fucking blood, made a makeshift tourniquet from the rope we had at hand and hobbled down from the rooftop and then started to lose consciousness from blood loss while waiting for the ambulance. Fucking... That's scary, dude. Yeah, you can't do that. You break it with a stick and then you fucking use a blanket or cloth to cover the, the shards and then climb through. You don't kick your way through glass, you fucking moron. The paramedics said that while I could probably use a transfusion, being a healthy 17-year-old, I should be okay in a day or two without one. Uh, and I managed to wheel my way out of the hospital that evening. I'm kind of pissed though. I almost died and only got... a. Uh, a terrible excuse for a scar to show for it. That and the video my mate took of the whole event, kick and all. Oh, yeah, that's something to show the kids. I feel sorry for the cleaner who cleans the bathrooms at the hospital because I needed to take a piss, and as soon as I stood up, blood started going everywhere, spraying the whole disabled bathroom with blood. Shit looked like a crime scene. Yeah, that's uh, terrible. That is uh, horrific. P.S. I really wanted to get on your Patreon, but I'm struggling to get a job right now as nowhere is hiring new people. Instead, giving the people who lost their jobs because of Corona their jobs back. Uh, that's fair. Uh, yeah, don't uh, don't support me if you don't have the money. Uh, I would much rather you uh, put obviously put all of your money into a fucking imaginary thing that doesn't make any sense and then make millions. Guys, I'm angry because I could have made way more than two grand. That's why I'm really mad. I'm mad at you. The, the listener, the patrons who decided to not sell and uh, made more money than I did. So, you know. 
I'm going to end it there, guys. Thank you very much for for listening. If you want more podcasts, I'm going to continue on right now. Uh, the Patreon version, a uh, spearhead, the Spearhead Supplement. It'll be up on Patreon right now when this episode comes out, and you get access to the Discord, and you can rub it in your face. How much more money you made out of stupid, dumb shit uh, than I did. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Grab your tickets, loosespears.com, Melbourne. The shows are going crazy. This is the best I've uh, ever sold. Uh, at this point in time for a comedy festival, for a Melbourne show. So they're going crazy and they are limited capacity. I keep saying it. You better believe me. Get your tickets now. We've got Afterpay. Uh, you can get it on Tick. Organize your friends. Uh, please get tickets to that Saturday the 27th. I would love to sell it out. I think there's like 20-something seats left. I would love to fill that one first. All the other ones are filling up nicely, but I would love to get an actual sold-out show on the board Uh, in the first week. So thank you very much. Fuck you. And I will talk to you next Sunday or in a couple of seconds if you're on the Patreon. Thank you. Fuck you. Goodbye. Have a shit one.